So this is a short and somewhat incomplete video showing my Halloween guillotine that I made a few years ago. So here you see it's actually out on display. Um, it's made of basic materials. I don't have any drawings or diagrams for these things. The uh, main frame is made of two by three pieces of wood. It stands about um, seven feet high. Uh, the two boards which go where the head would go are actually fencing boards with a big circle cut out and then a very simple screw for a hinge uh, allowing them to open and shut. So you can actually put somebody's head in there. It looks really good as a Halloween prop like that. Now the blade does actually work. This is an, an earlier one that slides up and down in a slot that's been um, cut out of the two side pieces. Uh, my new one actually uses a piece of plastic uh, that I got from a, um, a political um, slogan advert thing that was left lying around in the dirt one day. So uh, that's where that comes from. So thank you very much to Ken. Um, and uh, this static prop there, it's just painted with a walnut wood uh, finish. Then we're just, we're bloodying it up, make it look realistic. Got a, got a head in a basket. So the overall thing I think is a, a pretty good impression. Now it does work, it goes up and down. But one thing I wanted to do was basically motorize it. So I have a solution this year, uses a DC motor, pretty cheap motor, about $7. Lifts the thing up in the air holds it when it hits the switch at the top and then once it's triggered it drops the blade hard. Um, it's going to look pretty impressive um, and uh, I'm looking forward to using it this year. So this is a short video just on the electronics and basic mechanics of that small um, design. Um, if there's any interest I can post the code. It just runs on a standard Arduino Nano. Um, nothing uh, fancy, very simple code. It's just looking for basically changing of state of switches and turning things on and off. If you like the video, I would ask, can you please take a look at my other videos and then hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a very short video on um, the workings of my automated guillotine. So I built a guillotine a few years ago and it was just a standard static prop i did make it so the blade would slide up and down and, and chop down um but I, I always wanted to sort of lift it up wait a while and then chop it down to sort of kind of scare people this is the uh, controller board that i've come up with this year this is uh, based around one of my scares and sparks uh arduino based prop controllers um it's one of the earlier prototypes it's all hard soldered into here what we have uh, going around it is I have a PIR sensor which is um, used to wake up the prop. I have a switched light output that will actually come on um, when the prop is running so you can get a, a spotlight. You have an audio amplifier in here which drives this speaker which just sits there and points downwards. Um, and then you have the actual mechanism itself. So two things, I suppose. You've got a, a power input. This runs off of 12 volts coming off of a, a bench supply at the moment. Um, and then actually there's a mode switch, which enables me either to put it on timer or to put it on automatic PIR sense. So if it's on PIR sense, it gets senses a person and goes off. If I put it on timer, it will just go off every once a minute anyway. The actual mechanism uses a DC geared motor, uh, which basically gets switched by this MOSFET transistor. So this is driven off of 12 volts and it turns this 3D printed cog. The motor is hard bolted down with this plastic 3D printed bracket to this base piece. You've also got another plastic bracket here at the back and another one here which also has a servo on. Now you'll see that in by default, when the thing is gonna pull the, th uh, the tail up, pull the, the blade up, the string goes through the hole. And this little bit here, again, more 3D printed pieces, the two cogs will mesh together and the blade will be pulled up. And when the blade reaches the top, hits a switch, A micro switch on the blade 
and that tells the prop controller that the blade's at the top. Then it starts to look for its trigger. If it's in PIR mode, gets a PIR trigger, and then the controller will move the servo motor from its standard place over to here. And what you see then is that it's got a spring in here pulling it back. So this end just slides, this end springs, and boom, the two cogs become unmeshed. Now when they're unmeshed, the, the weight of the blade will pull the thing down very fast and drop the guillotine quickly. And then as soon as you take the servo away, the spring wants to pull back. And as soon as you start trying to wide the blade up, it will flip, flip back into place. You can see there's some wear on the teeth. This has been up and down, oh, I don't know how many times, probably 200 times in testing. And so it started to look a bit worn. Um, but uh, I could either just reprint them or just wait. But I mean, they're, they're meshed pretty tightly, so they should still last quite some time. So it's a quite a simple mechanism. It did take a while to get the right spring, uh, the right distance here to the servo. Um, if you go too far away, it doesn't disengage, sort of it does that. If you do it too far, the whole thing can end up with so much friction and tension, it won't move. So there is a bit of fiddling about. It's all just built on this wooden board, nothing fancy. There's the bottom of the switch. You can see I've actually extended the switch by soldering an extra piece of metal to it. And then this whole mechanism just bolts into the guillotine frame such that the, the, um, the wire basically just dangles down. I've got a spring on the end of it. Now the spring is there because when this thing lands, it is actually quite a severe jolting force and the spring just helps take some of the sting out of that force and stops the string from breaking. Now, of course, you could use different string. This is just standard kind of gardener's twine, I think. Um, you know, it goes round and round here, maybe about a dozen times. This is like a three quarter PVC roller that's just been glued into some 3D printed end pieces. And then that's about it really. And I'm gonna now uh, wire it up with a 12 volt supply from this bench supply and see if I can get to show it working uh, at least on the bench. Then I do have a video of it working in the actual guillotine itself. Okay, let's see if we can get the thing to run. Just got uh, a string down. I put a hammer on it, which is heavier than the real guillotine blade, but usually I mount the whole thing up differently. So I just wanna make sure it actually spins. I've also got a bit of grease on the cogs does help them engage and disengage smoothly. So we're powering the thing up in 12 volts. First thing it does, it starts driving the motor upwards. Uh, it's pretty slow. That's kind of deliberate. I wanted the thing to have a sense that it's got something, something's going to happen, so to speak. Now let's pretend it's hit the, hit the top, close the switch, the motor turns off. Then there's a little bit of a pause. Now uh, this pause length is going to be dependent on whether you've got the PIR set up or whether you're just going to be in timer mode. We talked about that just earlier. But uh, when it does eventually go, I can't remember if it's PIR mode or timer mode at the moment. Um, basically you get a signal over here and it tells the thing to drop the blade. And there you go. So the blades dropped. You saw the servo activated here. Push the spring, disengage the cogs. Now the thing will go back to start again and it will start winching the blade up ready for next time. So, like I said, not easy to get spacings all right. How far this moves, which type of screw here, um, the meshing of these cogs even the gap between them, making sure there's no friction in this in this gap here, for example. Um, but overall, I'm hoping the thing will be reliable once it's deployed. And here goes the blade on the roller. It's the switch. Servo disengaged, spring engaging, 
Press the button. Pretty good. Thank you to Ken Galemo. You know the hell you are. And off it goes. Re-engages and starts to pull it up again. 